<laughs> so today we're doing something pretty cool. We're taking a deep dive into, get this, a Spanish language video essay about Batman. Batman. Yeah, Batman. Wow. But uh, it's not about, you know, the usual Batmobile and villains and all that. It's actually this video essay analyzes Batman begins the movie through two lenses, um, which I'm sure a lot of our listeners will be familiar with, the hero's journey oh, yeah. and the Enneagram. Interesting. So it's a pretty unique take on it. Yeah, definitely a unique approach. And what's so fascinating about it is that it really reveals a lot about storytelling, I think, and maybe even a little bit about you know, ourselves in the process. Yeah, totally. So for those who may not be as familiar, you know, with the whole Joseph Campbell hero's journey thing, yeah. basically it's like that classic story structure oh, yeah. that we see in so many films and books yeah. where, you know, the hero goes on an adventure, they face all these trials and tribulations and they come out changed. Right. You know, so think like Star Wars, the Matrix, they all kind of follow that pattern. Yeah. And then we've got the Enneagram, which dives into all those different personality types. There's nine of them, mm -hmm. each with their own, you know, little quirks and motivations, fears, all that good stuff. Right. And what I think is so brilliant about this video essay is it actually takes each stage of Batman's journey, you know, his hero's journey, and links it to one of these Enneagram types. Oh, wow. It really adds like a whole other layer to wow. how we understand, you know, Bruce Wayne and his transformation to Batman. So you're saying Batman Begins is like secretly a personality test in disguise? Well, maybe. <laughs> I'm here for it. All right, let's 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 break this down. All right, so we start with the ordinary world, which in this video is linked to Enneagram type nine. Okay. Often called like the peacemaker. Mm-hmm. So, Think of Bruce Wayne, the very beginning of the film. He's kind of frozen in this this state of grief. He's just kind of drifting, you know, not really living up to his full potential. Stuck in a rut. Exactly. Classic uh, type nine, it sounds like. Very type nine. But then, you know, like, bam, call yeah. to adventure, hits him like a batarang. Exactly. His parents' death, you know, it just like rocks his world. It changes everything. Turns everything upside down. And, and the essay links this to... Um, the anger and the need for justice that's associated with Enneagram Type 1, the reformer. Okay. It's like this tragedy just flips a switch in Bruce, yeah. and it awakens this desire to fight for what's right, even though at this point he doesn't really have the means to do it yet. Yeah, he doesn't have the tools. He doesn't know how yet. Yeah, he's figuring it out, which is where I guess the mentors come in. Exactly. Because, you know, every hero needs a guide, or in Batman's case, like two. You got Ducard right? and Ra's al Ghul. Right. Now, the video, it connects this to Enneagram Type 2, the helper. Yeah, yeah. But there's a twist with this one, right? There is, yeah. There's definitely a twist. Because, I, I mean, on the surface, you think Type 2, they're all about, like, nurturing, supporting others. Yeah. But they can also have this kind of shadow side where they kind of, you know, blur the lines between helping and manipulating. Oh. And, you know, I mean, both Ducard and Ra's al Ghul, they really embody that that duality right. perfectly, I think. They mm -hmm. train Bruce, they guide him. Right. But they both have their own, you know, agendas. Totally. They're not, not necessarily doing it completely selflessly. Right, 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 yeah. So it's a really interesting dynamic there. So he's stuck between these two, these two really powerful mentors. Yeah. Like, trying to figure out, you know, his own path. Right. And that kind of brings us to, I guess... The next stage, crossing the threshold. Yes. Which the video links to Enneagram Type Three. Okay. The Achiever. Uh huh. And and what's cool is visually in the film we see this when Bruce he like literally walks through this doorway to meet Falcone. Oh wow. It's it's like he's stepping into this whole new world, which I guess you know. Right. Kind of like how how a three wants to like make their mark on the world. Yeah, no, I, I love that visual metaphor. It's such a turning point for Bruce. Yeah. And that type three energy, you know, it's all about ambition. It's about yeah. proving yourself, reaching for success. Mm -hmm. And this is where we really start to see Bruce tapping into that drive. Okay. Even if it's, you know, maybe a little misguided at first. Yeah, he's still figuring it out. He's trying to make a difference, but he doesn't quite have, like, the road map yet. Right, exactly. He doesn't know what that looks like. And... That leads him, I guess, down into the abyss, so to speak. Mm -hmm. The video essay actually calls this stage the abyss. Yeah. Where Bruce, he confronts his fear of bats, you know, deep in that cave. Oh, the cave. Yeah. This is where the video essay makes right. 
like such a fascinating connection, I think, to Enneagram type four. Okay. The individual is, and when you think about it, you know, the abyss mm -hmm. in any hero's journey. Yeah. It's about like facing your inner demons, yeah, right? Yeah, totally. And type fours, they're known for their self-awareness, their willingness to really like delve into those those dark emotional depths. Yeah. So it's like Bruce is literally confronting his shadow self down there. Wow. In the darkness. So he's literally and figuratively facing these fears. Yeah. And then you you know then comes the fire. Oh yeah. That iconic scene where you know he's engulfed in flames and then rises from the ashes. Oh, it's so cool. Classic death and rebirth imagery. Like a phoenix. Exactly. And it's not just you know cool visuals. Yeah. Like it represents this symbolic death. Oh, okay. Of the old Bruce Wayne. Right. The one who was, you know, defined by that trauma, by that mm -hmm. fear. And, you know, this is crucial, I think, for any hero's transformation. Yeah. The video essay really highlights how essential this stage is yeah. for Bruce to become something, something new, something stronger. So it's like he has to, like, burn away the old to make way for the new. Exactly. Out of the ashes. Right? Wow. Talk about an intense personal growth retreat. Seriously. But um, it doesn't stop there. No. He's got skills to learn. Right. He's got to snag that fear toxin antidote. Yeah. yeah. And then there's that whole, like, memory jolt that Rachel gives him. Uh, right. The essay calls this seizing the sword or elixir. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It's connected to Enneagram type 5. Makes sense. In the investigator. It makes so much sense because fives are all about that knowledge, right. that mastery of their skills. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about, like, physical strength at this point. Right. It's, it's mental and emotional preparedness. Yeah. Bruce is, like, arming himself with knowledge. Totally. With is. a plan and just this real drive to understand the world around him. Yeah. Which is... Pure type five energy. Pure type five. So he's not just stronger now, but he's really equipped to face like whatever his destiny is going to throw at him. But he can't exactly just like call an Uber to get back to Gotham. I don't think they have those in Gotham. Right. Not yet. So this is where we get that. Yeah. That high octane escape from the Narrows. Yeah. And the whole Batmobile chase scene. Oh, it's so good. The road back, as the video calls it. Okay. This is where it gets interesting because they connect this to okay. Enneagram Type 6. Okay. The Loyalist. Interesting. Okay, I can see where you might you might think, wait, Batman. Yeah, like how did that... Loyalist. Really. Yeah. But hear me out. Type yeah. 6 is. They are fiercely loyal to, to the, their beliefs, to their people. Okay. And Bruce... He is dead set on protecting Gotham. Right. On honoring his parents' legacy. Yeah, that's his driving force. But they also, you know, crave security. They want a sense of safety in, in the chaos, mm -hmm. which I think is perfectly reflected in that that frantic escape. Yeah. You know, he's trying to create some order from this. Yeah, he's trying to get out oh. of this crazy situation. Wow. I I never thought about it like that, but it, it totally tracks. Right. Like, even with all that action, there's this real sense of urgency, yes. this need to, like, make things right, which I guess leads us to, you know, resurrection or atonement. Okay. This is where Bruce makes the choice to, you know, rebuild his home and yeah. fight for, like, Gotham's soul. I mean, he could have just walked away, right? Could have. Hidden from all that darkness. Yeah, he could have just stayed gone. But he doesn't. He doesn't. And this this really resonates with, you know, the heart of Enneagram Type 7, the enthusiast. I feel it. It's that desire to bring, like, light into the world, yeah. to make a positive impact. Exactly. He's, he's atoning for, you know, what he sees as, like, his failures right. and trying to, like, fight that corruption that's, that's eating away at Gotham. It's a, that drive to heal, to bring some joy back. And that I guess that kind of brings us to the like the grand finale, the return with the elixir, right? Where we finally see Bruce as Batman. Yes, you know the fully fledged hero, like watching over Gotham, the protector. Yeah, and the video essay connects this to you know it, Enneagram Type Eight, of course, the Challenger. It makes perfect sense, right? Yeah. I mean, eights—they're those natural leaders. They're strong-willed. They're protective. Yeah, they use their power to to defend what they believe in mm -hmm. to shield others yeah and that's that's batman to a t isn't it totally i mean he is he is strength he is justice yeah 
standing against all that fear that's, yeah. that's gripping Gotham. Yeah, he's he's a symbol. He is a symbol. It's really it's really kind of mind blowing. You know, like what we think we know Batman. We've seen the movies. Right. We've read the comics. And then this video essay comes along and it's like, totally. just adds this whole other layer. Like yeah. who knew the Enneagram could like unlock all this stuff about a superhero story, you know? It's really amazing how, how, like you were saying, you know, it takes something we think we know so well. Yeah. And then it just makes it feel totally new. Totally. And I think it just speaks to how, how powerful these frameworks can be. You know, yeah. it's like they give us this this new lens to view not just stories, but also like ourselves. Totally. Because, I mean, in a way, aren't we all kind of on our own like heroes journeys? In I, a way? I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just about, you know, yeah. Batman and his like cool gadgets and all that. Right. Right. You're saying this this deep dive, it gives our listener like something to, to think about for themselves. I think so. Yeah. Like, first of all, I think it reminds us that. That there's always more to uncover. Yeah. Whether it's a movie or a book or or even a comic book, like yeah. Don't just you know, watch it and and be done with it. Right. Like, dive in. You know. Yeah. There's there's layers. There's always more. But then I think, more importantly, it gets us thinking about yeah our own motivations, our own fears. Totally. How we we react to challenges. Mm -hmm. That's where I think the enneagram can be surprisingly insightful. Yeah. So I mean, if our listener is like sitting there thinking yeah okay this is cool but like what's my enneagram type right like what what would you what would you say to them what's like the takeaway yeah i mean i think it's it's not so much about just like slapping a label on yourself yeah. and being like i'm a this or i'm a that i'm a five done I get exactly like <laughs> case closed you know it, it's more about self-awareness yeah you know Remember like me. what what makes you tick? Yeah. You know, what are, what, what are your strengths? But also, like, what are those those shadows that you might be be avoiding? Mm -hmm. Like, just like Bruce Wayne in that cave, you know, facing facing those bats, those fears. Like, that's how we, we grow. It's about, like, looking inward a little bit. Yeah. Understanding, like, what, what drives us. Yeah. What yeah. makes us who we are. I'm getting the feeling our listeners might need to do... Like a little homework after this deep dive. Oh, wait, a little journaling. A little journaling. A little introspection. Yes, exactly. Like, but but it's exciting homework, right? Oh, it's the best kind. Because just like Bruce Wayne, you know, he discovered that he could become Batman. Right. I think. Like, we all have that potential within us. We do. To tap into something, you know. It's about figuring out, like, what is our Batman? I love that. What's your Batman? What What are those unique strengths that that we can use to to face our own challenges and make our own impact on the world? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's a that's a really uh, empowering thought to kind of like end on. You know, it is. So, listener, as you're you know going about your day, yeah, maybe maybe ask yourself what's yeah. what's my enneagram type, right? And and more importantly, like what am I going to do, yeah, with with those strengths, those those unique qualities to make my own mark. What's your story? Yeah, what's your story? It's been it's been a wild ride with this deep dive. It has. But hey, that's that's what they're all about, right? That's what we're here for. Until next time. See you later.